we have the second ionization energy that we want to figure out. Uh, let me double check. Uh, the second ionization energy for the helium atom. Really, what we're going to do is use the Rydberg equation. And that could be what throws you off a little bit. And then there's, there's going to be another issue with it, or something I didn't mention from it. So, change in energy is a Rydberg constant. I'm going to put a little space here. 1 over n uh, initial squared minus 1 over n final squared. Okay? And final for an ionized is infinity. It goes to infinity. That means this term is going to be gone because 1 over infinity squared is essentially 0. Okay, and then let's see what uh, orbit. It doesn't say anything about the initial orbit. So what you'd want to do in that case is walk over to your periodic <laughs> table. Helium is 1s2. So the initial orbit is what? Anybody? It just has to be 1, because n is 1 for 1s2. Is that okay? So we're going to do an initial orbit of 1, because you have no other choice for helium. Uh, now, what you didn't know is, when we did this calculation in Chapter 7, we've always done it for hydrogen. Uh, there is an implicit uh, z squared in here that you didn't know about. z is the atomic number. When we did it for hydrogen, hydrogen's one, so one squared is one. And that's why we've always ignored it. Though if it happens to be anything else, you do have to think about this now. So for example, for helium, it'll be two squared. Lithium, it'd be three squared, beryllium, four squared, etc. Okay, so we need to put the number two in here. So far okay? You need to calculate that number. I'll just lift it for you. That number is gonna be 8.72 times 10 to the minus 18. 8.72 times 10 to the minus 18 uh, joules. Uh, but there's another problem. Uh, they don't want joules. Uh, they want per mole. And it says that in the question, kind of in the subliminally. It says compare the results to the tabulated value uh, 50 to 51 kilojoules per mole. So they want your final answer in kilojoules per mole. This is really joules per one atom of helium. So you need to take that number, 8.72 times 10 to the minus 18, uh, and this is joules per atom, and use Avogadro's number to go to moles. So that would be uh, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms per mole. And then one more thing, based, based on the question they want in kilojoules, not joules. So there's uh, 1,000 joules for the denominator uh, for one kilojoule in the numerator. This is going to turn out to be 5249. kilojoules per mole, which compared to 5251 is really great agreement. So your final answer is yes, it agrees well with the tabulator.